they called me Cookie. At least that is the title the new species gave me when they joined the crew. Being unfamiliar with their language and what they call slang, I thought this was an insult. Being that as may, I extended my forelimbs and rose in a fighting stance, screaming, What did you just call me? These humans were not frightened as I raised myself to the deckhead, but instead they were confused. Politely, they explained that this was a friendly term for a respectable supporting classification. Before I retracted, I demanded an example. They then yelled, Doc! Two of the humans answered before moving to the front of the serving line. Using a translator, I could read the names on their uniforms. Neither of them were named Doc. The medics Borrego and Peterson explained the situation and the names and associations. Lowering myself, I had to explain that in my language, what humans call the aggressive K, is associated with insults and expletives. They looked at each other again and laughed before saying, You haven't heard anything yet. The human soldiers began to move through the line as I asked if they were carnivorous or not. They shocked me by saying they were omnivorous. With that, I had no idea what to do. How do I, or my staff, prepare a meal for a species that eats anything? Perhaps they saw the confusion in my antennae and told me not to worry. As long as the meat is cooked and the rest isn't rotten, They'll eat it, emphasizing their point by saying, We're grunts after all. The issue was that all that we served was raw meat for the carnivorous personnel and leafy greens for our herbivores. I thought the humans would be angry and not having anything to eat. To my shock, they ate it all. While they consumed their meal, they started asking for things like sodium chloride and something called pep -ar, and other items we barely had any stock of. I would have put in a request for some of these items as they seemed to be in high demand. To my shock, the humans were soon able to produce some of these items within just a few days, though in very small quantities. How they did this, I am uncertain. Whatever I inquire, I would always get the response of, don't worry about it, with a direct stare into my two primary eyes. When we pulled into our first port after that, I was very disappointed in the log pack I received. Most of the additional items I had requested were denied. Being a warship about to go on deep patrol, many of the areas would be filled to capacity with standard food, not only the cold storage, the cabinets, the pantries, but also under the floors and stacked up any place it can be stored at all. The humans were not surprised by this at all and aided with this storage. With seemingly practiced precision, they were able to store even more food than we believed even possible. Amazed with the amount of extra room, I requested a few luxury items that I heard the humans enjoy Yet, after reading the ingredients, the thought of it made me actually ill. Once underway, I began to apologize to the crew about the lack of condiments, as they call it, for their food rations. Surprising the entire staff, the humans had managed to procure a large quantity of what they desired. As they seasoned their food to give it more taste, they seemed to enjoy their meals much more thoroughly. The aroma of many of these seasonings was pleasant, to say the least. Each of these spices that seemed to be aerosoled enough to be tickled by my antenna made me enjoy my job just a little bit more. A month into our patrol, the humans told my staff and I to take the afternoon off. They had planned to create their own foodstuffs that day. Curious, I asked to join them. They showed their teeth when they told me they would enjoy my company, though this made me a little apprehensive. I was told about the human's proclivity to smile, as they put it. 
but it's still unnerving from any predatory species. Arriving in Cargo Bay 4, the moment the door opens, a strange and horrifying yet almost pleasant aroma hit me all over. This strange gathering had almost every human on board attending, along with a few other species, mostly the humanoid staff, but there were also insectoids like myself, and a surprisingly high number of reptilians and avians. Approaching the dock, I found out what was making that smell, that aroma. Somehow, the humans had found a way to heat up a flat metal surface and were using something like this to cauterize the meat. It was no wonder that this smell made me flinch on my planet. If there is the smell of burning flesh, someone is on fire. The humans told me that such an event is called a bar b k u and it is a common social event on their planet. Though different regions have their own adaptations for this practice, the main concept is the same. Bring a group together for recreation over freshly prepared foods. Being a carnivorous species myself, I was interested in the food, which there was a lot of it. Not only that, but the amount of additives, toppings, condiments, or whatever you want to call them was impressive, to say the least. After a short time, one of the humans yelled out that the meat had been finished in his preparations. Everyone lined up, and I followed them to the burned meats. Many different items had been covered in a strange, red, viscous set of fluids. I inquired about them, and the humans said they are wings, which, of course, made our avian species afraid just by hearing this yet they still wished to attempt eating the human food. I was told to go easy, as my palate may not be adequately prepared for the flavors. Nearly scoffing in his face at the implication, I began to tear a piece away of the way the humans did. In all my time, I had never tasted meat like this ever. Each serving, I would try a different addition to the, what do they call this, the burger, or they had something called a hot dog or a brat I was eating. The humans told me to try the seasoning before I placed it on the meat, but I didn't really give a care as I was enjoying it too much. That is, until I tried the wings, not caring for the bones, as my mandible could crush them easily. I began to consume the ones with the dark blood on them. What I originally believed to be blood was actually a sauce that danced inside my palate. I was so enthralled eating these spices with its flavorful sauce that I did not see that I had ended up piercing an orange one with my forward claw and put it into my forward orifice without a thought. The humans began to show fear and concern that I didn't understand at first. A few moments later, I understood. As though my entire maw all the way down my gullet had been set ablaze, while many of the humans seemed to revel in my sudden agony as I desperately tried to breathe without feeling as though my exoskeleton was becoming the edges of a blast furnace. Though this was only a few moments, these moments seemed to last for hours before a few humans ran over to me holding containers of a strange white substance. They started yelling at me to consume it, and when I motioned to them to keep it away, they yelled, Either drink it, or we will drive it down your throat, your choice. It was at this point I noticed the humans' reactions of laughter had been replaced by concern, as I had been on the ground actually clawing at my throat. Grasping the container, I poured the white substance into my mouth and proceeded to drink. It was not pleasant. But within moments, the fire in my body began to subside slowly. The doc stayed with me until I was able to talk without pain. I asked, what did I ingest? Doc replied, 
We call them hot wings. A poultry product covered in a sauce loaded with capsaicin. Capsaicin? That is, that is a controlled substance. And you place it on your food? Why? Another human with a hot sauce all over his lower face looked over and said, Because it's yummy. Something that dangerous should not be on board the ship, let alone in foodstuffs. The human with sauce on his face looked over and said, We did warn you, didn't we? Wiping his mouth with a strange cloth. We told you to go easy, and before we could stop you, you shoved a large wing into your face. Realizing my mistake, I apologized and left to go to my quarters. Two other humans walked aside me to make sure I got back all right. Before they left me, they offered to cover my shift on the next rotation. I believe they were just being generous, yet I was awoken by my internal structure about two hours later. Bolting to the head, I remained there for the rest of the day in complete agony. Surprisingly, the command never scolded me. Guess the humans were true to their word and they covered down on my shift. Yet I was still agitated that they had not warned me about the consequences of consuming that much capsaicin. This patrol would last approximately 420 Earth days before we would be able to return. Towards the end, most of the crew were so bored that they had begun performing physical activity, or what they call exercise, multiple times a day. Looking at how defined and dense with muscular fiber the humans became because this made me glad I had a surprise for them. When they had helped in stocking the ship, I started looking into old Earth customs. Once we entered back into Union space, the captain made an announcement for everyone to head to the galley. There, each of the crew were treated with two scoops of a frozen lactate they called ice cream. The thought of eating it still made me nauseous, and I figured they would be eating it while hiding in a closet so no one saw them. Yet the humans could not stop showing their teeth in their same joyous expression they have as they consumed it, loving every single bite. After serving all and heading back, my curiosity eventually got the better of me. Since the humans enjoyed the frozen confection so much, I put the smallest bit on my foreclaw and took a sample. It was sweet and creamy, yet something oddly familiar about it. That is when my mind suddenly registered as I remembered the white liquid they had me consume when I had ate one of those hot wings. Oh, shit, I thought to myself. I screamed so loud that the entire crew could hear me through the bulkheads. You sadistic, evil, hairless apes! As I tried desperately to keep my bile from shooting out my orifices in sheer disgust of what I had just actually consumed in large quantities, I heard something else coming through the bulkhead. Something I'll never forget. The humans laughing. Hello everybody, this is Syntex. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story. Before I go, I'd like to send out a couple thanks. Uh, one, to the inspiration for this story. That would be Tekaman Rage came up with this idea, and I filled in the blanks. And I need to send out another thanks to SS Demon for a previous story with the Human Shields. I also have to send out a big super thanks to The Sir. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. To everyone else, have a good day. This is Syntext, ejecting.